so I'm sitting on the Pathfinder and I'm thinking to myself, I better get real comfortable because this is the only boat we got for the next three months. That's right. We ended up selling the Contender. Um, it's a little bit of a bittersweet for me because we're gonna have to rough it out when the days get rough. We'll be on here riding dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one thing I can say is we've caught more fish out of this boat over any other boat. So yeah. it's not about the size of the dog, it's about the size of the fight in the dog. So. The wind has been blowing for about three weeks, maybe even longer consistently down here in the Keys. So yeah. with that, the water is really dirty, mm -hmm. it's very murked up. What we're gonna be doing today- Is holding our breath just a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna start diving at about 15 feet, probably 30 feet at the maximum today. But the reason why we're going so deep is because we're trying to go a little further offshore. Mm -hmm. What's happening is, is once we get offshore, that east wind is pushing the water in, and then we have current along the edge of the reef. We're gonna be looking for that current. Reason why is because that current is gonna drag all that dirty water out and away. So hopefully we can get some nice clarity, therefore we can find some lobsters, and that's the goal for today. We're not trying to catch limits, we'll talk about that later on, but basically we're just gonna get out, I'd say three miles, four or five maximum out in front of the house here, and just see what we can find down on the bottom. So here we go, the first dive of the season, and I'm trying my hardest to expend the least amount of energy as possible to keep my heart rate low and my oxygen levels high. But as I dive down, I see some antennas, which is a great sign. And the tool that we're using right here is two-sided. This side is a tickle stick, and we use this to get behind the lobster and just lightly nudge him out. You don't wanna give him too much force because you might spook him up inside of that hole once he's out, I take the tool, I flip it around, and now I'm using what's called the snare. And we're basically just getting this little wire around the lobster's tail. And once it's around there, we just pull up, he'll freak out. Then from there, you tighten down on the snare. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the best ways to catch lobster in conservative efforts, because it does the least amount of harm as possible, just in case this lobster wore short and we had to release him. He's a keeper for sure. This is a spot that we found spearfishing a couple months back. And yeah, there's a bunch down in there. One thing I could say is the water is beautiful, crystal clear. Everything worked out exactly the way I planned. But if you notice this lobster, he's actually purple. Where near shore, they're typically like brownish, kind of orange. But he's got all types of purple. I get he's got a purple tint to him, basically. But he is a beautiful lobster, man. Wow. So 
nice one right here. I want to say this that, one's a little bigger than the last. It, that one does look much bigger than the last one. Yeah. And I kind of learned when you use the stair, after you pull up, you got to push down on the stair so that way it can't slip. But what I noticed is he actually lost a leg. And it's imperative, guys, if you're going to go after a lobster, it's important to know if he's legal or not. Because when you catch these guys, a lot of the times they'll lose their legs, they'll lose their antennas. So you want to make sure if you're messing with lobster, you have a full intent to keep them. And that's exactly what we're doing with this guy right here. It's interesting, he's a lot more brown than the last one. So I'm wondering if maybe he was in some seagrass and he walked out here. But there's a couple more down there. Let's see if we can get them. It's been a while since I've done this, so I'm getting a little nervous. throw him in the live well and that's a great start for me Woo <laughs> now let me go get another one <sighs> that was cool As long as this doesn't wrap over the backside of him, you are good to keep him. But look at that. I guess I've been spoiled in the past with some larger lobster that I was like, man, I don't know if he's legal, but he's legal. So I am dumb. So I am dumb. Hey, Zach, you wanna open that? I will. I am so happy that we were able to do it. We weren't sure we were gonna be able to get out here because the weather was looking uh, not favorable. So I'm glad that I was able to catch my limit. Woo! -hoo! Good job, Stephanie. Good well, job half, to you too. Half a limit. Half a limit. Yeah. For me, that's my own personal limit. But we're gonna turn this camera around and we're gonna start pointing it at Zach. So the man behind the lens. That's right. Let's see if he can catch. It's his time to shine. His personal limit. What's your tactic, Zach? You know, filming you so much, I feel like I've actually caught a hundred lobsters already <laughs> and speared a hundred fish and caught a hundred fish. Dang, man, you're making me sound like I'm really good. <laughs> you know? <laughs> In reality, I really have not done much, but I talk so much about it, like I know what I'm doing. But uh, I'm just gonna go down there, lasso them up, Colorado style. There you go. You know what you do? You pretend you know what you're doing, so that way, just in case you do know what you're doing, people think you're a pro. Fake it till you make it, baby. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. 
deep under the rock to see if there's another one down there. He was deep, deep in there. Is that the last one on that rock? No, there's like four more in there. Really? Yeah. They're just loaded inside there. How was it? I only caught one other than this. His legs are actually kind of sharp. Yeah. Digging right into the glove. I don't even need to hold on to him. He's holding on to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That was so much fun. One. Yeah, he was deep under there. You. Yeah. Sweet. Basically, what we're doing out here today, guys, is we're just trying to be as conservative as possible. I understand that mini season, it's a tradition for a lot of families. You guys love eating lobster. You like catching that limit, and that's perfectly okay. You know, we have the luxury of being able to come out here whenever we want, and catch these things. So with that, we're only taking what we need for today. And I encourage people. You know, if you have access to the water and you have the time to be out on the water often, don't stick it in the freezer. Just take what you need, and that's exactly what we did for today. But what we're gonna do. We're gonna head back in, obviously, because it just keeps on getting nastier out here today. I think we're gonna hit the sandbar just because it's nice and hot. The day is still beautiful, but it's a little too sporty to be out here offshore today. We clean up the lobster just in case this is something that maybe you guys want to get a little more serious about just want to talk about the gear these are Cressy 2000 HF fins and if you notice these fins are much longer than your typical fins the reason why is because these are free diving fins and basically that length is gonna help you to dive deeper a lot easier these are Stephanie's these are the women's version I guess so to speak but anyway mask we're using is called I believe it's made by Evo yeah but the biggest thing that I could say about a mask guys is make sure you try it on before you buy it reason why is because everybody's face and head is shaped differently so I suggest if you're gonna buy a mask make sure you go to a dive shop and you find one that feels good this one has a little GoPro mount built in which is really cool and then these are just some regular old mechanic gloves get the job done you can just buy these from Home Depot or a lot of the times tackle shops sell lobstering gloves we already talked about the snare earlier 
And then we obviously have some nets on board just in case we want to switch up our style a little bit, even though we didn't use these. All right. So if you guys have ever watched any lobstering videos on YouTube, you probably know exactly how this process goes, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. Everybody does it a little different, but this is actually something new that I learned. Previously, I always used to take the tails and ring them, but what I'm gonna to try today is I'm gonna take one of our flex fillet knives and I'm just gonna cut the meat out rather than twisting, just because you can get a little more. And as you can see, we have some extra there, but from here, we're gonna break off one of his antennas. Now that we have it broken here, we're gonna break it up towards the top where it's a little thinner. And if you could see on his antenna, his antenna is actually barbed. So basically they go backwards. We wanna keep that in mind because we're gonna go into his bottom hole here and we're just gonna go inside, twist it in there if it doesn't wanna go in. And then we pull out and basically what those barbs are gonna do, it's gonna pull out that line of feces inside of there, just like that. So, Clay cleaned up the lobster and they're in the fridge waiting to be cooked by your very best, moi. And we're going to head to the same bar. Three years ago, if I would have told you this would be a part of work, would you believe me? Probably not. <laughs> Speaking of work, somebody just ran aground over there. I'm not the type of person to put somebody on blast, but I'm not gonna lie, something like that really upsets me. If you guys ever run aground here in the Florida Keys, just stop. Don't try to power your way out of it. You're just gonna make it worse. The best thing that you could do is trim your engines up get out of the boat, try to get all the weight out of the boat and push it because what you're doing is you're just tearing up seagrass. Got my toes in the sand, don't worry in the world because I got Clay as my man. Hey. <laughs> I make my own remixes here. <laughs> right, Clay? Right. I got my toes in the sand, not a worry in the world, cause Clay is my man. He is the best. All right, so Zach, the last time we were here, you were trying Trying it lobster for the first for, time, for the yeah. first time. Now this yeah. time I've caught it for the first That's time. That's so. How was the experience? It was awesome, especially using that snare. It was so easy. You just put it right around them, and they just sit there and let you do it. And just like I said, Colorado style, wrangle them up like a bull. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them back to the boat. Well, there you go. Those lobsters didn't know they were gonna have the Zach attack come through. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so right here, we have a few of our ingredients that we're gonna need, and we're gonna be making some lobster rolls with a cilantro lime mayo sauce. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add this recipe in the description below so you guys can follow along if you guys like what we do here. Stephanie gets some teamwork in the kitchen. What's crazy is I can look out the balcony and I can see the exact spot where we caught these lobsters. Wow, That's you have really I, good eyesight. I have fantastic eyesight. What's awesome about spear fishing too, which we started to do a lot of, is we actually found these lobster while spear fishing before lobster season was open, obviously. When we came back to the spot about five months later, sure enough, they were all just loaded inside of the rock. Ah, oh, great sous chef. 15 to 20 minutes now. 
Do you guys like avocado? <clears throat> it's about one tablespoon. I love avocado. So let's add two tablespoons. All right, let it rip. Pretty good. Can you get me a spoon? <laughs> you got stuff all in your hair. Can you get me a spoon? Huh? A spoon, please? Yeah. Thank you, sous chef. Man, if only I could get him to do this all the time. Salt, some Tabasco. Supposed to do green Tabasco? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Got a lot of chopping to do there. No, I it breaks you're up. Need more buns too. No, it's good. Yeah, you load them. Really? Yeah, yeah you just like you load it packed where it's falling out. All right. By far, one of the best ways I've ever eaten spiny lobster. Really? Yeah, no doubt. That is really good. I really like it too. Good call with the more lime. Right? right? I taste <laughs> all the lime on it. Told you. The waves were definitely a challenge, but mm -hmm. that just goes to show right there, guys. Weather out every single storm, there's always a bright sunny day mm -hmm. at the end of all the craziness. And and Although, there's always food waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, we're hungry right yeah, now. Yeah, right. That's how you know we went diving. Mm -hmm. But it was a fantastic time, guys. Thank Bless. you all for hanging with us, watching. Of course, we got to put down some food. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>